Hi, this is Tag again, and today I want to talk a bit about fixing cold bug slash cold slow on GPUs. Now, there's going to be sort of three methods here. Uh, two hardware, one software. And let's get right into this. Now, the first one I already showed uh, some time ago in a GTX 260 video. So let's do a quick recap of that. Uh, this is a GTX 260. And if you earn two cool this thing, and um, just stock as it is, it is going to cold slow. So that means it's going to run at 2D clocks uh, in 3D benchmarks. Now this happens because the card thinks it's overheating. Uh, basically there is a temperature sensor on here. This is this little thing. Uh, it's called an ADT7470 I think. Uh, or 7470 something. Anyways, it always has 7, 747 uh, on it. And basically uh, the measuring range on this sort of overflows. So when it gets too cold, so it, it flips to the highest and then starts counting down again. So your card is going to probably think it's running somewhere around, I don't know, 200 degrees or something. Uh, 200, I think 255 would be the overflow value. So uh, somewhere around 200 plus degrees on the other two. So the easiest way to fix this is just to remove this. Let's get the example here. So this is my benching card. This is a uh, Gainward GTX 260. As you can see I removed this and this fixes all your issues. Now, there is some cards that also have this uh, sensor, but it doesn't seem to matter as much. Now this is obviously dead. Um, maybe you can tell from the missing chip here uh, or the missing corner. This is just a parts uh, 8800 GTS. Now there's also this chip here, but the G80 doesn't have sort of 2D clocks. So this thing is not gonna thermal throttle on you. Uh, or, well, thermal throttle, uh, cold bug, cold slow, whatever. Uh, it might turn off the VRM though. Uh, I'm not sure, I never ran, <laughs> this might sound a bit strange, but I've never actually run a 8800, so a G80 card on LN2 without throwing e-power on it first. So I have no idea if the stock VRM is turning off, but that's a rather common issue on uh, GPUs in general, that the stock VRM, let me get a pointy thing, uh, screwdriver has to do, uh, that the stock VRM basically gets turned off. Now there is something called an enable pin on most VRM controllers, so this little thing here, and that is usually switched by a little transistor somewhere on the card. Uh, in this case I couldn't find the data sheet, but I sort of reverse engineer it to a point where I, I'm reasonably confident that this little uh, transistor here is our uh, transistor that can pull down the enable pin. Now I'm not sure if this card would do it because I also checked over here on the temperature sensor and there isn't, doesn't seem to be uh, any, any trace between, like the, there is sort of a emergency power off pin on this. Um, maybe I'm going to show you the data sheet later. And I, I couldn't find any connection between this and the resistor array or the, rather the bunch of resistors before, before this little uh, transistor. So I'm not sure this would even turn off, but there are definitely cards uh, that have this issue. And I think I'm just going to show you some example data sheets. Um, and kind of explain how you how do you do it. You just find the, the enable pin. Sometimes it's called something else, so I think it's a good idea to show you. And and then remove a transistor. It's, it's always a transistor connected to the enable pin. Sometimes it's connected through a sort of low impedance uh, resistor. Uh, in this case, it's uh, I think 10 ohms or something like that. Uh, it's not always connected directly, but it's almost always like um, really low resistance between 
the transistor and the, the enable pin. So there's also a third case and that's mostly concerning for me new cards, probably for you not so new cards, uh, stuff like G92 and Fermi. And I'm not sure if, if it goes much beyond that. But if you see this PCB, you're going to notice that there is nowhere, I think this is the unpopulated pad actually, that there is no um, 16 pin thermal uh, sensor chip here. Uh, instead, this has the monitoring in the die itself. So in this case, you basically want to use a little software. I'm going to include a live demo of that software here. And that little software just sort of tells the, I don't know how it does it actually. Uh, maybe it tells the driver or something, uh, a fake, a fake uh, temperature reading. And that's the way you get rid of cold slow on these. Now you might still have hardware cold bug as in turning off the VRMs. So the mod with removing the FED from the enable pin might still also apply. I haven't had this card on L2 yet, but I will probably do that shortly. Uh, actually, maybe with the original VRM, just to make it a bit interesting. Uh, usually I'm, I'm pretty lazy with that. And stuff always clocks better on ePower anyway, so that's the GDS250 you're going to see in the demonstration clip for the sensor. And well, as you can see, I solved the VRM turning off problems with ePower. Uh, on this one, actually, the the VMAM controller also does uh, VPLL, and thus basically it would not detect power good and not turn on. And that's why I have a sort of secondary ePower and VPLL here, right? I noticed that after the fact. Uh, if you have one of these, I think it's a reference PCB uh, 9800 and GTS 250s, maybe just leave memory alone and let the original controller do its job. I don't think it profits much from the ePower anyways. Uh, so yeah, let me cut to the computer and show you some examples of the enable pin mod and then a quick live demonstration of faking a temperature reading on a uh, GPU with integrated thermal monitoring. Okay, so here is our example datasheet. Now this is the VMAN controller on the 8800 GTS I used as an example. Now I picked this one because it has one of the more common issues uh, you will find when looking for an enable pin because there is no pin labeled EN in the pinout section. You can click quickly zoom in here. There we go. Nothing says EN here. Now in case, in this case, the pin that we are looking for is F as this. But if you would be looking at a controller that's new to you, you would not know how this pin is called. So we're going to read the description of this pin. So you know what you're looking for and basically can go out on the hunt yourself on unknown controllers. FS this. This input pin has two functions. A resistor to ground sets the internal oscillator frequency for the switching regulator. So basically this is the pin you would mod if you were to do a switching frequency mod like I did on those Asus X48 boards. Now in this case I don't think that is really something you would want to do, a switching frequency mod on a 8800 GDS memory VRM. Doesn't sound like it would be very useful to me, but in theory, if you wanted to do it, basically what you would do is decrease the resistance on this pin towards ground. In addition, if this pin is pulled down towards ground with a low impedance under one kiloohm, such as an external FED, it will disable both regulator outputs until released. Now this is the part we care about. Uh, basically means it shuts down the controller if you pull it to ground. Now the pulling to ground part is what that little FED or transistor I showed you in the video before does. 
and the reason it says both outputs here is just this specific controller because it has a linear regulator output that will drive a single FET as a linear regulator for some minor rail. For example, on the GTS250, that is the VPLL rail. Now, other common ways of saying this in the datasheet uh, would be something like it will disable uh, the switching controller or it will disable the output or something like that. So basically, if you find something that says if it is pulled low or to ground, uh, it will disable something in the datasheet, then it's very high chance it is your uh, EN, EN, so enable pin. Uh, originally, I wanted to do this on wrong datasheet, on the VCO controller of set 8800 GTS. Now, this Primarion stuff is notorious for not having proper datasheets, so we don't have any pinout in this datasheet. But luckily, we have a little block diagram here that has the pin labeled as out EN. And I'm about 99% confident that this is your enable pin. This is just another example for what it could be named. So that's it for the theory about enable pins. I will just cut in the practical demonstration of the software solution for cold slow here and that's it. Okay, so here is my practical example of a car with a uh, temperature sensor in the die. So you can't just remove it like I showed you before. And now I'm going to show you the software solution. Here we are at minus 108, and if you check here, GPU Z reads 240 degrees. Now, what is going to happen? Uh, in this case, this is a GDS 250. Is that the card is going to run in at basically 2D clocks once you start a 3D load? So performance is not going to be good. So here's that little tool. And now all you need to do is go temp sim here. Then enter a temperature below throttling, so let's say 20 degrees, and exit. And as you can see, GPU Z reads 20 degrees now. Let's close this, give it some more LN2, and launch the bench, and now performance should be nice. Come on, there we go, we got 30 something FPS, that's about where it should be for a LN2 cooled GTS 250. Now that's all on this, I think I will just leave you a little link to the tool in the description. And well, that's it for the software solution to uh, cold, slow and cold bug issues.